SpaceX Starship updates and how does Starship generate power? My name is Felix and I am your host for today's episode of What About It. There has been a lot going on in the space industry lately, so let's dive right in. Starship updates. It's as always incredible to see SpaceX continue with their rapid progress in Boca Chica. Starship Mark 1 is supposed to fly this year and it is already confirmed that it will do its belly skydive on its first flight. No matter what happens on that first flight, it will be pretty epic to see Starship raise up into the clouds, flip around and come back down free falling towards the ground again. And as it seems, SpaceX is working all hands on deck to achieve this goal in the set time frame. One of the most interesting parts right now is the plumbing. A lot of installation is happening on the top bulkhead. We can see how incredibly complicated it already is, even though it's just a very rough prototype. This is nothing like what Starhopper was. It is much closer to the full vision of a production starship. I'm still trying to connect all the pipes into a logic scheme, but I think we're getting closer to a full picture here. And again, the community surrounding the channel helped in the process. I am looking at you, Highlander. The large pipes on the side going up will, against my prediction from last episode, most likely be for fueling, as the same pipe width has been installed on the pad, obviously being fuel lines. There recently was a leaked image from inside the lower methane tank. I will not show it in my episode, as I never do with these kinds of pictures out of respect for SpaceX. But there is an internal fuel line going from the LOX tank to the engines through the methane tank. So it's likely that fuel flow for filling is going up externally and fuel flow to the engines is kept internal. Now if you look at the plumbing again, there are three small pipes on the outside going from just above the main lower fin actuator all the way up to the top of the LOX tank on one side. The same three pipes can be found on the other side as well. And here they're going from just above the actuator only to the top of the lower tank. It does look like these might be for autogenous pressurization. Hot gas from the turbo pumps is being diverted up into the tanks, again to repressurize them and in return get rid of the otherwise needed helium pressurization system. It would also make sense for both large fuel pipes to go all the way up to the cone section as the header tanks need to be filled as well. What do you think? Work has also continued on the nose cone and it is very interesting as well. In the original setup before the presentation, the canard fins were just loosely attached for the show. Anyone looking closer was able to see that this could not be the final design. SpaceX has been busy working inside the cone for a while now. First they widened the hole on top again to be able to get better access. And then out of our sight they worked inside of it. My guess is that the hydraulic system for the upper canard fins must be inside that cone. So besides header tanks and batteries it will get pretty cramped inside. But that's the whole intent. Elon Musk stated that he wants to get as much weight as possible into the nose. To counter center of mass issues and in return enable the Starship prototype to do its belly flip maneuver to begin a skydive and again at the end of the skydiving phase to be able to flip the engines down again to do the landing burn. An essential role in this flip maneuver will be played by the upper canard fins. And here is where some rather interesting work has been done lately. As you can see SpaceX workers have welded some kind of guide rails onto the cone on the outside where the cannons will be. We can already see a possible actuator or mounting hinge installed in the middle. What could these guiding rails possibly be used for? I've been thinking hard about this but couldn't come up with any sort of good explanation. Are they just temporary? Under the yellow measuring tape there's black writing. I was able to read something on the lines of stiffer actuator? Is that where an actuator will be? Lots of open questions. Again, if you have any ideas, tell me in the comments. I normally read all of them and answer a fair bit as well. If you got the second it takes, make sure to also hit that like and the subscribe button if you liked what you just saw. It helps a lot. Thank you. The Patron Question Now here comes a first for the show. One of my benefits on Patreon if you reach a high enough level is that you can ask me a question and I'll answer it on the show. Semi Oscuro is the first to reach this level and so he gets his question answered today. So Sammy asked me the following question. Since at the latest Starship presentation there was no rendering showing Starship having any sort of external solar panels, how will SpaceX supply power to the Starship on its way to Mars and back? Alright Sammy, here we go. So this is what the original design idea looked like. 
On the interplanetary transport system, we did not have to ask these kinds of questions. There were nice and big solar panels on either side, probably providing a lot of power to the crew and systems inside. Then in 2018 it all got complicated. SpaceX removed the solar panels in their renders and they never came back. Even the later renamed Starship showed the same picture, it didn't have it anymore. And the latest version doesn't seem to have it either. Now if we assume that our Starship will not have any sort of solar panels sticking out like in the original design, how will they keep the lights on? Now let's go about this with a little strategy to not get lost in thought. What are our options? And I'm just gonna look at the realistic stuff here. No future sci-fi tech, all the Captain Kirks and Buzz Lightyears can skip ahead if they get bored. Number 1. We could take the energy with us from Earth in form of stored energy. Number 2. We could produce energy with some sort of fuel in space. Number 3. If Starship has no solar panels anymore, maybe we could incorporate solar panels into Starship's hull. Now let's start with number 1 as that's going to be a quick one. If we compare Starship to the ISS, as it will most likely have somewhat similar power needs, we would be around 75 to 90 kilowatt hours of power needed. Now if we want to store energy, a battery would probably be the best way to do it. A Tesla Model S 85 kilowatt hour battery weighs around 540 kilograms and would last for around an hour of operations. If we assume that a Starship would only need 3 months to go to Mars, that would be 2160 hours. So our Starship would need to be packed with roughly 1166 tons of Tesla batteries. Let's just say that doesn't make much sense. You'd need around 10 Starships to move the amount of batteries needed for one of them to have power. Number 2. How about we produce the energy on the way with fuel? Here two major methods come to mind. Fuel cells and nuclear power. Fuel cells are a common use in space. Even the Apollo program already used them back in the 1960s. The Apollo command module's primary source of electric power was from a set of three fuel cells housed in the service module. Each fuel cell combined hydrogen and oxygen to produce electricity and water. The water was even used for drinking by the astronaut crew. Why not use what we already have, right? Now Starship does not use hydrogen as propellant, but methane can be used as well. In fact, the Georgia Institute of Technology even had a breakthrough with methane fuel cells operating at low temperatures and cutting down production costs significantly in 2013. Methane fuel cells normally require 750 to 1000 degrees Celsius to operate. The new cell developed by the GIT runs at 500 degrees, which is even a bit cooler than a combustion engine requiring 600 degrees. One of the problems here though is that the methane fuel cells require water. As it is a closed cycle system though, the water is released again in the end and can be reused. This is brand new technology though, as older versions of methane fuel cells needed a so called steam methane reforming at higher temperatures, which is heavy and expensive. Both of which SpaceX will want to avoid. So possible, yes, but still not ready for production. The other possible fuel would be nuclear. A small reactor could power Starship. It will be hard though to get permission to do it. SpaceX is a private company. Private companies tend to have trouble getting permission to fiddle around with radioactive material of larger quantities. Also, if a Starship has problems on launch, radioactive material could be dispersed over a wide area. So there are safety issues here as well. To my knowledge, Elon Musk never said no to nuclear powered Starships, so that could be a viable option. In fact, NASA is actively working on small sized nuclear reactors for space travel purposes. Kilo Power is an experimental project aimed at producing new nuclear reactors for space travel. The project started in October 2015, led by NASA and the DOE's National Nuclear Security Administration. As of 2017, the Kilo Power reactors were intended to come in four sizes, able to produce from 1 to 10 kilowatts of electrical power continuously over 12 to 15 years. The fission reactors use naturally occurring uranium-235 to generate the heat. Starship would need around 10 of these to be on the safe side though. So again, there is no readily available tech to be implemented into our Starship, which makes this option unlikely again. Number 3. How about solar panels on the hull? This is rather difficult to answer, but there is one big problem here. Heat. 
Starship is going to get very hot on the outside on re-entry and solar panels tend to not like this heat very much. I did not find anything about heat resistance when it comes to solar cells, but I am very sure that they will burn up on re-entry. The Starship heat tiles are not transparent, so any use for solar under the belly is out of the question. That leaves us with the leeward side. Unfortunately, there are no hard numbers on heat accumulation on the leeward side, but if it doesn't get too hot, which might well be, we might see solar panels get integrated into the hull there, similar to what the trunk on a Dragon capsule has. The next problem here would be surface area and alignment. Starship's hull is curved and there is just not that much area that could be used. As the cargo bay, windows and the proposed big gallery window on top are all on the leeward side, we would be left with a rather small area. This area then is heavily curved, which reduces efficiency further. Taking into account that solar energy diminishes over time as our Starship flies towards Mars doesn't make the outlook better either. So with a big maybe, integrated solar panels could work. So all three options are either not feasible or at least unlikely. But this doesn't answer Sammy's question, right? What will Starship use for power production? There's one option we did not explore yet. The best part is no part, right? At least that's what Elon always says. Starships, at least in the beginning, will carry lots of solar panels with them as cargo. Musk stated numerous times that the preferred power supply by SpaceX on Mars will be sustainable energy. Solar as wind and water are not an option on Mars. Paul Wooster also stated that the recent Mars Society conference, which by the way was covered in episode 43 and is definitely worth watching, that the first starships will stay on Mars. They will not take off again as colonists will use them for housing and all the other facilities needed on Mars. Why not just make a deployable array? On the way to Mars, starships could just open their cargo bays, deploy those solar arrays, use them in flight to generate power and fold them in again when they arrive in Mars orbit. Then re-enter and deploy them again on the surface for use as a permanent power supply on the Martian surface and freeing up space inside. This would be a very typical Elon Musk solution. Why bring extra solar cells if you can just use those that are already on the cargo manifest? This, of course, all is just speculation. There is no information on what starships will use to generate power. It might also be a mix of all the options mentioned. In the end though, SpaceX will try to take the approach they're always taking. Minimize cost and weight by getting rid of unnecessary parts. So Sammy, I hope I was able to answer your question sufficiently and I'm looking forward to talking to you about it even more. See you on our Discord. So this wraps up today's episode of What About It. What's up with all those pipes on Mark 1 and will Starship use its stored solar cells on the way to Mars to generate power? As always, tell me in the comments. Here we are again at the end of the episode thanking the best people in the world for their continuing support. Today you got a big insight into how much they are involved into the behind the scenes work. And as always, we have more patrons to give a shout out to and to thank for their dedication above and beyond. Everyone, please give a warm welcome to Matthias Kordisch, Lawrence Craddock and Don Jones. You rock! Thank you for watching this episode of What About It? If you liked what you saw, remember to like and subscribe as this helps me the most. Feel free to hit me up on my Patreon page so I can get additional help in doing more and better content as this gives me the time to focus on what I love doing the most to give you the latest and greatest about space and science. I hope to see you on the next episode. Until then, have a great time. So it's likely that fuel flow for f f f f f fuel flow. Now if you look at the plumbing again, la la. <laughs> a typo. Lawrence Craddock and John Dones. What? <laughs> so savvy, savvy. <laughs> You're